Welcome back, boys and girls. This is grade four, lesson 5.6. It's called number patterns, and our essential question today is, how can you make and describe patterns? And this is important because we not only want to make them, but we want to be able to describe them. So before we get started, let's start with some definitions. A pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects. And of course, we see these every single day in our world. The other definition that we need to make sure we understand is this one. Each number or object in that pattern is called a term, T-E-R-M, term. So we're going to get started right away, and we're going to look at a, a word problem, and we're going to take a look at the terms and the pattern in this word problem. So here's our word problem. Daryl is making a pattern for a quilt. Maybe you have quilts in your bedroom. Maybe they have them in your home. Maybe you're familiar with quilts. The pattern shows 40 squares. Every fourth square is blue. How many blue squares are in this pattern? So since we have our information, the first thing I want you to do is underline what you are asked to find. All right, good. So if you've underlined how many blue squares are in this pattern, that's going to be um, that's actually what you're being asked to find. Now, here's the question I have for you. What information will you, use, will you need to use to answer this? So let's go back in and look at the problem again. I want you to circle what you need, or tell me to circle what you need to use. Okay, so if you Circle the word pattern, shows 40 squares, and every fourth square is blue. I think you're doing pretty well. All right, so let me go ahead and rather than creating this, I'm going to use a grid, and let's figure out how to use the grid to help us find out how many blue squares in this quilt are going to be blue. Okay, here we are. I have a grid on my grid paper and I've drawn out 40 squares as you can see. And I've taken the first square, number four, and I've shaded that in. So because we know that quilts are set up so that they have an equal number of items in each row, the pattern is set for us. So let's go ahead and count. So if number four is blue, we're gonna go four more over, and yes, you're right. Number eight will be blue. Count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 12 will be blue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 16. 20. You're doing well. 24. 28. 32. My next four would be 36. And my last four would be 40. Because every fourth square, and I'm counting, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, you get it. Now let's go back and count. There are two blue squares in this line. There are three blue squares in this line. There are two blue squares in this line. There are three blue squares in this line. So all together, I have how many blue squares? You're right. I add them up, and I have ten blue squares. All right. Which squares are blue? Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four, twenty-eight, thirty-two, 36, and 40. Now, what patterns do you see in the arrangements of the blue squares? I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. Okay, so you might have said there are two blue squares in the first row, three blue squares in the second row, two in the third row, and so on. And if we continued making this a longer, a longer quilt, 
uh, I think our pattern might continue. Here's a question for you. What pattern do you see in the numbers of the blue squares? Oh, okay. Well, what you might say is that the number in the the numbers in the blue squares are the multiples of four. So now we're starting to connect our chapter five factors, multiples, and now patterns. All right, pretty darn good. Let's move on. All right, in this period, what we're going to do in, in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to find and describe a pattern. So I've given you a pattern right now. So I have five, ten, fifteen. What do you think the next three numbers would be? All right, you're going to use a rule, and you're going to write the numbers in the pattern. Oh, this one's pretty simple. I think you're right. 20, 25, and 30 would be the next three numbers. And what would the rule be? Well, moving from 5 to 10, I added 5. 10 to 15, I added 5. 15 to 20, I added 5. So my rule would be to add 5. Now, let me ask you some questions. What do you notice about the digits in the ones place? You're right. Here's a pattern. The digits in the ones place alternate between 0 and 5. Alternate between 0 and 5. That's a good way to describe the pattern. Can you describe the, the uh, pattern using the words odd and even? All right, here's a possible answer. The terms alternate between odd and even. 5 being odd, 10 being even, 15 being odd, 20 being even, and so on. How about this? Can you describe the pattern using the word multiples? All right, if you said the terms are multiples of five, you are absolutely correct. So I'm gonna give you a few more to work on. All right, so I'm gonna ask you to find and describe the pattern in the following ordered set of objects or numbers. Now, the, pattern below, the numbers below form a pattern. The first term in the pattern is number two. So let's take a look and see if we can not only figure out the pattern, but what the rule is, and let's find out how we can describe this pattern. Take a look. Good job. If you said that the rule is to add three, you would be right. Let's see if this continues. 2 to 5, add 3. That's correct. 5 plus 3 is 8. That's correct. 8 plus 3 is 11. That would be correct. What would be the next three numbers in our pattern? Take a look. You're right. 14, add 3, 17, add 3. The last number or the last term in our pattern would be 20. Good job. So a rule is used to describe the pattern. The rule for this pattern is to add three. Good job, boys and girls. I'm going to give you some patterns to work on right now. And so as you do this, I want you to be able to think about the words that you're using to describe your pattern. Do you see a situation in which you can use the words odd or even? What about the word multiples? Are we adding and subtracting? Are we using more than one operation? Let's take a look.
All right, I want you to take a look at this one. I want you to find the pattern. What is the rule? Look very closely. 8, 6, 12, 10, 20, 18, 36. Let me give you a minute or two to look at this, and then I'll come right back. Well, good job. If you said that the rule was to subtract 2 and then multiply times 2, you would be right. So your rule is to subtract 2 and then multiply times 2. Let's see. Let's take a look. Starting with our first term, number 8, if we subtract 2, we get, yes, 6. 6 times 2 is 12. Good job. 12 minus 2 is 10. 10 times 2 equals 20. 20 minus 2 equals 18. And 18 times 2 equals 36. Good job, boys and girls. As you can see, sometimes in our rules, we're going to have more than one operation. So now it's time for you to try some practice problems. So here we go. All right, so here are the three, here are the three practice problems I want you to do tonight. You're going to use the rule to write the next terms in this pattern for number one. The rule is to add seven. We're going to start with the number 12 as your first term. And you will fill in the next five numbers in that pattern. In number two, your rule is to multiply times three, subtract one, and the first term in your pattern will be two. And number three, you're gonna describe another pattern that you see for the following rule. So you're going to subtract five, your first term is 50. I want you to write the numbers, the first six numbers, and then see if you can describe another pattern that you see. All right, boys and girls, good luck. Remember, we're talking about words like odd and even, multiples. Use what you know and what you've learned in Chapter 5 to help you to describe the pattern, follow the rule, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.